everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today we're going to be checking out Wild in the Streets. Now for a few years now, Chris Kohler from Slow Death Games has been slowly putting together a collection of models to play the game of misspent youth. Now what Wild in the Streets is, is inspired by all those crazy movies you saw, um, like The Warriors, or Hobo with a Shotgun, or um, all those fantastic B-movies where misspent youth um, are basically brawling in the streets. And it takes um, sort of, I would say the 90s through the early 2000s archetypes and tropes of different gangs of people um, from that time we all had in high school, we identified ourselves by what we liked and what we were into. So. Factions include things like the Krusty Punks, um, the Murder Cult Girls, you've got the Goths, the Death Rockers, um, and all kinds of other sort of like, I guess, high school, teenage, youth tropes. Um, and they form the nucleus for a Gangs of New York style, really awesome, fun um, skirmish game. So uh, Chris had for a long time had his, I think it was the first one he did, it was Sid the Krusty Punk, um, available on the Corehammer website. Um, but Slow Death Games is now uh, in the middle of a Kickstarter, and actually when you see this, it'll be three days from completion uh, for Wild in the Streets to have a whole bunch of factions and be a playable game. Now Chris was nice enough to actually send me um, some models so I could check out the game. I've put it all together, I've got a very, I think, cool table set up to get Wild in the Streets in, some streets themselves, um, and I'll tell you more about that later. Uh, but I've also got three complete starter sets for the game that'll be given away. So two of my patrons on Patreon um, are going to get, uh, who are interested, are going to get um, a copy of this sent to them for free as well as one interested YouTube subscriber so all you have to do if you're one of my patrons on patreon is just heart the video on patreon um, and comment on it and if you are one of my YouTube subscribers um, if you're not already subscribed hit subscribe uh, and if you uh, want the uh, the copy of the game you want to be eligible for the draw just up on the video and comment saying get, let's get wild in the streets and we will uh, we'll select from those people and they can check the game out and it'll be sent to them for free I'll get in touch through uh, YouTube messaging uh, and you guys can uh, can check the game out too. So it's three days from completion. He's already well past his goals. Um, he pretty much has, I think, a, a bunch of different gangs unlocked at this point. Um, so you'll be able to check them out. Uh, there's a link below in the video description to go check it out. Uh, there'll be a little link in the info thing. So if you look up into the um, little I button, it should be like around here somewhere, you'll be able to go and check it out there too. So hope you guys enjoy this. I'm gonna go through the models, uh, what we've got available. So this is exactly the same thing that I'll be sending out to people. We've also got uh, the starter, quick start rules for the game. You'll be able to check it as well. And we're gonna go through and get started. So here are the cards and the quick play rules for Wild in the Streets. Now the quick play rules are literally front and back, one sheet of paper. Um, it is a super simple core mechanic game uh, and it's made interesting by two things. One, every unit gets its own unit card. Uh, you've got characters who can lead your gangs and then you've got uh, like just sort of dudes, gang members that can be with anybody. Uh, as long as they have the same faction symbol. And then you've got events and upgrades. Now events are cool. <laughs> I love the name of this one, Homemade Speed. These are the upgrades that you take basically to add to your gang deck um, to give you advantages and you can choose once per game to throw them into the shuffle pile for who gets activated and have them show up basically. So um, the core mechanics are pretty simple. Uh, you've got f six stats, you've got your move. So this is Dave, he's the leader of the Goths. Uh, you got a move, which is how many inches you can move. Uh, you get different kinds of moves too. You can stand still, move, or run. So if you stand still, obviously you don't move at all. If you move, you can make a um, single th uh, move it up to your move stat, and you can do a throw still, but you're minus one to your total for your throw. And then you can run, which means you move twice your move stat, but you can't do any throws. You could, however, if you end into a uh, combat, do some fighting, and it's a charge. Uh, you've got your throw, that's the number you add to your throw attacks. You've got your fight, which is the number you add to your melee attacks. Your dodge, which you add to uh, any dice rolls trying to avoid fights and throws. Your wounds, just simple, how many hits you can take before you uh, go out. And then how many models this card represents. So Dave is an individual, he's a character, so it's just one. And then you got the faction. So if Dave's a gang leader, he can recruit from the Goths and the Death Rockers to hang out with him. And then finally you have how many points he costs. So this little score right here is for marking wounds. Um, or attached upgrades too, if you want to do it that way. But it's just basically a little note-taking thing, and that's why I put these in card sleeves, so I can just write on my dryer's markers. Uh, and that's the anatomy of a card. So Dave's a character. You can only ever have one of any kind of character in your gang. But then you can have as many attached gang members as you want. So these are Death Rockers. 
They have a move of four, a fight of three, a throw of one, a dodge of three, two wounds, and there's two models. So this card represents two different death rockers, and when it gets basically drawn in the, the pile, you can activate both those death rockers. And now they have the faction tag Goth and Death Rocker, which means they'll work with Dave. Uh, two of them will cost you 30 points. It's not one each, it's just you, you get that many models for this point cost, which means that Dave and the Death Rockers together are a 50 point gang. Uh, now we've also got Tristan. She's the leader of the Murder Cult Girls. Um, and she's got a move of five, fight of three, dodge of four, throw of two, three wounds, and she represents one model. She's also a character. Um, and the only faction she can recruit from is the Murder Cult Girls. She's the captain of the swim team. And when she's not the captain of the swim team, she's, you know, killing people for good grades. Uh, the Murder Cult Girls, or as I'm gonna call them, the Heathers. Um, they're also uh, two models per card, 35 points. They can only belong to the Murder Cult Girls. Um, and they have a move of five, a fight of three, a throw of one, a dodge of four, uh, three wounds, and they are two models each. So they're pretty tough, but they're also spendy. Uh, and then we've got some events here. Now, not all of these events are gonna be relevant to the cards here, uh, but this one, for instance, could be, and it would offset the fact that these two together are 60 points. The Death Rockers and Dave are gonna take this upgrade of homemade speed. Somebody's been getting into the Dristan, I guess. Um, someone's mom was kind enough to cook up some homemade speed, hang on to this card, and choose a card to apply this to. The model or models attached to that card can ignore the first win they receive. But you can't play it on straight edge models because they do not partake. And then it's got a little quote, dude, my brain feels like a rainbow on a treadmill. <laughs> So for 10 points, once per game, you can basically attach this card to one of your players or one of your gang members or a group of gang members, and they can basically just get an ablative wound, which is pretty awesome considering these are only two in models um, that they can just shrug a wound basically once per turn if they're already in the thick of it. Could keep them alive for a turn basically. So these are the events things. Now there's other kinds of events. So brought the foam swords. Oops, the next LARPer is drawn, can't activate until the next shuffle. Basically, if you throw this into the pile and you're fighting LARPers, because yes, LARPers are gonna be a gang, um, the, uh, the LARPers don't get to activate that turn because they've realized they didn't bring their real swords, they brought their foam swords. Um, circle pit, so uh, people release some aggression. So it only works on straight edge, skinhead, hardcore, crusty models. For 10 points once per game, they can make an extra attack uh, that turn, so they can attack twice instead of the normal once. Uh, free beer is a good one. <laughs> so <laughs> then it's basically um, head of the party in your new Fred Perry sweater and 14 hole Doc Martens. The next skinhead card that's drawn can't be activated until next turn. So if you know you're fighting the skinheads, you bring some free beer and they just completely forget what they're doing and start drinking. Um, and there's sellout. Uh, the youth crew has been betrayed. Uh, when this car is drawn, no strange models can activate next turn as they're too busy arguing that someone started drinking. <laughs> edge break equals face break, man. If you're not now, you never were. So they basically the straight edges start arguing about the fact that they found some beer cans in someone's sleeping bag um, and they're super mad about trying to find out who it is. So uh, as we don't have any straight edge or um, what is it, uh, who else was in here? Hardcore, any of those models in in our sort of like gangs for today. They're not useful upgrades, but they're cool because they represent some of the upgrades that you could take. Uh, we do have one other model available, but he's not gonna protect because he's a crusty. Well, he's actually a punk, crusty, or hardcore. He can be in any of his parts. He can lead any of those factions, and that's said the crusty punk, but we don't have anybody to go with him, um, so he won't be played with today. He's gonna watch in his awesome Dead Kennedy sweater. So let's go through the basic mechanics of the game. Now we've gone through the anatomy of the card and the factions. So we set up um, in a real simple way. We have our table. Um, there's no recommended table size. I'm going to be playing on a three by three. You just roll a d10 and the highest rolled player is the person that draws first. Uh, the player with the highest draw uh, draws their first card after you shuffle all of your cards into a common pile. Uh, and it's alternated that, uh, if playing two players, uh, basically going clockwise, whoever gets to go first. Uh, and if not, then you just keep going clockwise if it's more than two players and go around until you come back to the first person. Uh, if you draw your own card, then you activate a single group. If you draw a opponent's card, you hand it to them and they activate. You can place your miniatures anywhere on the table as long as you're out of range of any enemy figures. Cards with multiple figures do not need to be placed together or kept any set of coherency. Note that you will, um, although you may place your miniatures out of charge range, you may still be in charge range of your opponent. So if your opponent moves fast, you gotta be careful because you put guys down in charge range. And that means that just like for activating models, setup is done the same way. You just shuffle all of your cards into a pile so I'm gonna do it right here with the Death Rockers, Dave and Tristan. We'll shuffle them and then we'll deploy that way. Um, but we'll do that after we check out some of the actual miniatures. 
Uh, game turns go the same way. You put all the cards in the common pile again, then shuffle them. Any of your upgrades you want to use that turn, you'd add to that pile as well. You'd then roll a d10 for each player to determine who draws first. Ties are re-rolled. The player with the highest roll draws the first card. If that player draws one of his own cards, you can activate it. If the card belongs to another player, then you hand it to them. Uh, when a card is activated, the model or group of models expends all of its actions. Event cards, as I explained, are added to the deck when you want to use them, so they offset points. So for instance, the homemade speeds being brought by the Death Rockers to offset the 10 points that they are short compared to the Murder Cult Girls. Um, and if I wanted to use it during a given turn, I would add it to the stack and shuffle it in. You can choose to add an event card into the deck before it's shuffled at the beginning of a turn. And once it's activated, it's been played and it's then discarded at the end, so you only get it once per game. Um, and then uh, the how to fight, combat's real simple. You roll a dice, you add either your throw or your fight. Um, your opponent throws a dice and adds their dodge. Tens are open-ended and you can keep re-rolling. So tens explode in this game, which is pretty important because it means that some of the really low value you can get a really high roll. Um, if the attacker's roll is higher than the defender rolls, um, then the defender's roll, they just take a wound. Any rolls that are less, or sorry, lower or a tie result is, is no wounds at all. And for every friendly model of the same faction that's touching the defending model, you get to add plus one to your total up to a maximum of plus two. When throwing, if you miss, so if the guy defends, and you're in base to base with another model, so like let's say you're engaged, on a roll of six plus, the model you've been touching instead takes the wound. So you gotta be careful you're not too close to your own guys, because if you miss with a throw, you might just accidentally hit your friend. Uh, and that's it. Um, choosing your gang, we already talked about, you have to have the same keyword as your leader. Um, you can take a single miniature out of the same faction, so you could take um, Sid if you wanted to, but you can't take more than one model that's not the same faction as your gang. So in this case, because it's going to be balanced points, we're just going to use Murder Call Girls and um, the Death Rockers. So before we get set up, let's take a look at some models. Here's Sid the Krusty Punk. He's going to be sitting out this game, um, but he is exactly what I would expect a Krusty Punk to look like. He's got his Sambas on, so he's got some Adidas Sambas on. He's got his old shorts, he's got his well-studded vest uh, with a patch in the back. I painted a Dead Kennedy's vatch on this one because, you know, Dead Kennedys are awesome. Uh, he's got a little hatchet that he's hanging out with, and you would expect this guy to basically be sitting on the side of this building with a bunch of really old backpacks and sleeping bags, two or three dogs probably, and the dogs would be asking you for spare change so that they could eat. <laughs> With little signs. That's usually the, the Krusty Punk um, uh, that, that you see, you know, sort of hanging out in the streets day in and day out. Uh, it's a fantastic miniature, and if you want to buy it right now, you can either go to Slow Death Games or you can actually buy it on Core Hammer too. That's available on both. So there's the first model we're going to check out. Now let's look at the Murder Cult Girls. So here's the Murder Cult Girls. On the right hand side there, we have Tristan. Like I said, she's the um, captain of the swim team by day and by night. She's killing people with a beer bottle. And on the left, we have the Heathers, the Murder Cult Girls themselves. They got some kitchen knives and one's got a machete. Uh, these are sort of classic, they, I don't know, the, the, I think it's the cutoff jean jackets on the Heathers that make it seem 90s to me. There's a very 90s vibe going on about them. But they, they look like they wouldn't be out of place in the movie The Purge. They're just sort of random teenagers that have a proclivity for murder. And therefore, sometimes they kill people. Um, and these are one of the two factions um, that uh, is starting off sort of the uh, the round of faction miniatures being designed by Slow Death. So there they are, the Murder Cult Girls. Tristan on the right and the Murder Cult Girls. I'm going to call them the Heathers on the left. And here's the Goths. Out front there, we've got Dave. He looks unimpressed. He thinks that Bauhaus is the greatest band ever. And... He's not super into the um, the new sort of music that Goss is listening to these days. Uh, and then on the back there, we have some actual Death Rockers. The Death Rockers, uh, there's kind of like goth punks. We got a mohawked uh, one, and we've got one that's making a kissy face at a skull, kind of a, a last poor York, I knew him well, Horatio kind of thing. Um, and they are uh, a little bit sort of squishier than the Murder Cult girls are. They're not so crazy. They're more into rock and less into uh, murder, I guess, as it goes into the name. So I'm hanging outside the Trap 2 parlor here, but they've uh, taken some homemade speed with them to offset, I guess, the uh, the fact that they're not quite as good at fighting. So, uh, yeah, there's the miniatures we'll be playing with today. Uh, we'll pull them aside, and then we're going to shuffle the deck and get deployed. So here's the table we're going to be playing on today. This is some of my modern scenery. Um, I've had this for a few years now. Uh, this was made for my zombie game, um, but it's also going to be great for use in Batman and, of course, Wild in the Streets. It's all sitting on top of a 3x3 Urban Mats um, from Urban Mats. Uh, that Martin has made, which he made specifically for Batman, but I think it's going to be perfect for this game too. So we're going to shuffle up the deck, uh, and like I said, we will deploy right now uh, our first unit. That's going to be some Death Rockers. And I like where they were. They were kind of hanging outside the death, the, uh, the tattoo parlor. Let's bring up a one over here. 
outside the death rock or the tattoo parlor and the other one hanging out near this empty cop car because who knows why next up is gonna be tristan so she's not a murder car she's a murder call girl not a death rocker uh so she can't hang out within charge range and she charges a total of 10 so she has to be at least 10 inches away from a death rocker um i like the idea that she drives this bmw <laughs> So we're gonna hang near the BMW over here. Next up we've got Dave. Now Dave can't be within charge range of any models, but he can certainly be near his friends. Um, and he'll hang out over here, so you can see Tristan, um, but not so close that uh, he can be charged. And of course, last but not, last but not least, the murder cult girls themselves, they charge 10 as well, and they can't be within charge range. Um, so they need to be at least 10 inches away. I feel like, one on this side is probably a good idea, and one backing up over here. Hang in your Tristan. And that's it, we're deployed now, so we're gonna reshuffle the deck, and that's gonna let us uh, get our sort of movement and order priority down. Uh, now, this will be uh, turn one, and we'll roll to see which side goes first. All right, so the murder cult girls are gonna be the purple dice, and of course, the black and white dice will be the goths. Let's see who's going first. High roll goes to the murder cult girls. So the murder cult girls will be flipping the first card. And they even flip themselves, they get to go first. So the first one's gonna run. Um, she can go five and five again, so that's gonna be like this. Hide behind this postal truck and not be in range, hopefully, or line of sight to get shot. Next one's gonna do much the same thing. Going behind this lamppost, and then, oh, we're not gonna get across the street, but we're gonna try. I'm gonna head over to here. That puts them done, so now it's actually the goth flip, or actually the, the death rocker flip in this case, and it's gonna be Dave conveniently, and he's gonna charge. So that means a run move, so you can go eight, and he'll charge into this murder cult girl over here, whoop, and try and punch her. So he's gonna fight a three against her dodge of four. So he'll be rolling the black dice once again, murder cult girl will be rolling the purpley mauve dice and adding four. All right, so nine, which gives him a total of uh, 12 to her total of five, which means she'll take a wound. They have three wounds each, so she goes down to two. Bashed. All right, next activation is gonna be the Death Rockers. Uh oh, so we're gonna get double activated here. Uh, the first Death Rocker, uh, she's probably not with an eight, but she might be with an eight of this murder cult girl. Mm, not sure though. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna move over here, and we're gonna try and throw. So just a move. And then throw that skull. Death Rockers have a throw of one to the dodge of four. So it's gonna be black D10 plus one to the Purple D10 plus four. So that's seven to two, so that's gonna fail. Next one's gonna go, she's gonna run. So she's gonna go this, plus this, plus another one. And that'll put her just over here to back up Dave or her friend. And of course, last but not least, it's gonna be Tristan. Tristan gets to go. Um, she's gonna move a five and a throw of two. So she's gonna try and actually move and shoot. Heading over here and throw a beer bottle at her. So with a throw of two, um, the Death Rockers have a dodge of three. So pink is adding two, black is adding three. Uh-oh, so that's gonna totally miss. Oh, in the first turn, so once again, everything goes into a pile and we start shuffling. All right, the gang cards are all shuffled. We'll roll to see who's getting the first activation. It's going to five. That means it's gonna be the Murder Cult Girls. And they flip Dave. So they actually have to pass it over to Dave um, and he'll get to do something. Dave is going to swing on that murder cult girl right there. One of the Heathers. Heather one, let's say. So he gets to add his three and her dodge is four. So he's gonna get a 12, she's gonna get a seven. She could take a second wound. Only one wound left. Pass it over to the Goths now and they're gonna flip a card, but they're gonna flip Tristan and that means she's gonna get to go. She is going to move, move and take a swing. She goes 10 inches into this Goth. Sorry, Death Rocker. Whoops. Tristan is fight three against the Death Rocker's dodge of three, so it's basically a straight dice roll here. And they tie, so nothing happens. Next flip is technically the Murder Cult Girls. They flip the Murder Cult Girls. Oh, and it's time. So this Murder Cult Girl is going to move in and fight this Death Rocker. She'll get the plus one bonus from Tristan being there. So that means she's gonna get to add a total of uh, plus one, basically, because it's dodge three against fight three with the plus one for the eight numbering. She gets a five. Six over here, so that's no hit. Other murder cult girl is gonna try and fight Dave. Dave has a dodge of three against the murder cult girl's fight of three, so it's a straight dice off, and they miss. Goths are going last. Whoops, Death Rockers. Uh, so that's gonna be a rescue mission from this Death Rocker. She's gonna run 
Uh, or she can try and finish off this murder code girl. That's probably a better idea. She's gonna charge in here and try and finish her off. She got a plus one this time, so it's straight dice now because there's a dodge of four on that murder code girl. And the Goths hit, so that's last wound, this Merkel girl, Heather 2, or Heather 1, we're not sure which, gets taken out. The turn ends, and the Goths decide to press their advantage. They're going to take some homemade speed and put it in the pile. All right, we're shuffled up, so let's roll for initiative. And the Goths are technically going to get to go first, so they draw the first card. But it's the murder cult girls, and they're gonna get to swing. So we're gonna start with, well, there's only one murder cult girl, and she's gonna punch that goth. The Death Rocker over there um, is a defense of three. There's a fight of three, but plus one, because Tristan's staying there with her. So it's gonna be plus one to the total dice roll. She'll get a three, and they'll tie. So now the murder cult girl's flipping. They're gonna flip Dave, and Dave's gonna get to go. Dave is going to pile into Tristan. His fight of three, he's gonna get to punch at plus one, because there is also a Death Rocker engaging there. And he gets a five, so regardless of whether that plus one is coming or not, he hits and she will take a wound. Two wounds left on Tristan. Let's see who flips next. Homemade speed! So even if they get hit back, uh, we're gonna attach the homemade speed to Dave. Whoops. The Death Rocker's not getting to go, and they flip Tristan. And Tristan's gonna try and not punch Dave, because Dave is no glass yet on homemade speed. <laughs> and so she's gonna punch that Death Rocker instead. With plus one from the friend being there, um, that's gonna be a fight of four to a defense of three. Let's see if she hits. She does with an eight, so that's gonna be a 12 total. Um, and that means she will also take a damage. She only has two wounds though. So one more wound and she's knocked out. Final flip, technically the murder call girl's flipping, and it's going to be the Death Rockers. They get to swing. First one's gonna move over and try and punch Tristan. Uh, she has two friends helping out, so her fight is gonna become five to Tristan's defense of four. That's a nine, uh-oh, tens explode. So that's 10, 17, definitely hits. Um, and that means Tristan's gonna take a damage. Tristan's only got one wound left. All right, glassy-eyed Dave's not looking so glassy anymore. We'll shuffle up and see who's activating first. All right, the deck is shuffled, and looks like the Murder Cult girls are going first. Who do they draw? They draw the Murder Cult girls, so she's going to try and swing on her friends. She does have a buddy there piling in, which means she will be fight four against defense. Sorry, fight four, yeah, against defense three. So plus one of the deck. Uh-oh, but the Goth gets a 10. 13 total, and she will dodge. Activation over now to the Goths. But they pull Tristan, so she gets to activate. She will also try and punch that uh, last Death Rocker with plus one. Uh, she gets a four, to, which is uh, seven compared to a five, which was like the last wound off this Death Rocker. That does mean the rest of them are going basically unopposed though, so Dave's gonna get to attack with a friend. He is fight four, so it's a straight dice off against Tristan to see if Tristan gets hurt. Uh, Tristan does not dodge, takes her last wound and gets knocked out. And finally, the Death Rockers get to go. She's gonna move into base to base right here. Actually, no, she's gonna stand still and she's gonna throw. She has a throw of one compared to a dodge of four, uh, but this means she won't get retaliated hopefully against so bad, or at all right now. Um, and that means there's going to be a roll at, uh, no dice, that's only gonna be a three compared to a 13. With Tristan and her friend gone, we're looking at only one model remaining for the Murder Cult girls. Let's see who goes first. Oh, it's gonna be the Death Rockers. I don't think she can get to run. Dave gets to go. Dave's gonna charge in, whoop, and punch. Defense four though against a fight of three. So let's see if he hits. He gets a five to her seven and she evades. Next model getting to go, gonna be the Death Rockers. She'll pile in with a friend bonus. It'll be straight dice, four against four. Oh, but the Death Rocker, sorry, the Murder Cult Girl dodges with a 10. Open it becomes a 14. And last but not least, that Death Rocker's gonna go, sorry, that Murder Cult Girl's gonna go and she's gonna punch that Death Rocker. Now she's got, Fight three against dodge of three, and she misses. All right, new turn, initiative roll. It's gonna go to the murder cult girls, but they're gonna draw Dave, and he's gonna get to fight first with his plus one. It's a straight dice off, dodge four against fight four, and she dodges, so the murder cult girl getting out of the way. Uh, it's her turn now, so actually it's technically the, the death rocker turn now, and the death rockers go first again. So with the plus one again, it will be a straight dice roll. And yet again, she manages to dodge. So finally, it's gonna have to be the Death Rocker getting drawn. And she, sorry, the Murkle girl getting drawn. She's gonna punch that Death Rocker. Uh, she has uh, straight dice here. And she hits, down to one wound. Might even up the odds. Initiative roll again. Let's see who's going first. 
going to be a five for the uh, Murder Girl Girls, so it's going to be the Death Rockers. And they roll, and or sorry, flip the Death Rockers themselves, and she'll just attack with a pylon bonus. See if she hits. She does not. Next up is going to be the Murder Cult Girls, and with discretion being the better part of Valor, and to remove the pylon bonus on Dave, she's actually going to move back five on this postal truck, and throw a rock at this uh, Death Rocker. Try and knock her out of the game. She's a throw of one against a dodge of three. Let's see if she hits. She does not. The uh, Death Rocker dodges. And last but not least, it'll be Dave. He's going to pile in again. Uh, he can run eight, so he's got lots of room to charge. But he'll be at the disadvantage here. Um, she'll be at plus one because she has a higher dodge than he has a fight, and she will dodge. Initiative roll for the Wily Murder Coat Girl. She does not get to go first this turn, but we'll see who gets drawn. And it's going to be the Death Rocker. So she is going to charge to pile in, which means she can move twice. And go punch with a pile-in bonus, evening up the odds. It'll be a straight dice roll. And she hits. What's going to wound the Murder Coat Girl? Two left. So you get to flip next. It's going to be Dave. You will also get the plus one engagement bonus, so it's a straight roll, and he hits her again, down to one wound. Murder Cult Girl really needs to even the odds here, so she's gonna try and punk out the Death Rocker. It's a straight dice, fight three against dodge three, and she wins with a nine, which means it's gonna knock out this last Death Rocker, and it's just a one wound. Murder Cult Girl fighting Dave. Initiative roll. It's gonna be the Murder Cult Girl's going first, and she flips herself, which means she's gonna move back and try and throw a rock at Dave. He'll be at minus one though, so he's going to be at plus three overall, and miss. Dave going next, he'll pile in, and try and punch her. She's at plus one to the roll though because of her dodge, but it doesn't matter. Knocks her out, and that's game. Death Rockers win. All right, so there we go, wild in the streets. The Death Rockers managing to take out the Murder Call Girls towards the end there. Heather one, Heather two going down along with Tristan, um, while the Death Rockers and Dave the goth master and their home cooked speed uh, managed to win the day. Now that was a good uh, basic core mechanic demonstration using two factions, but I think where this game is really gonna shine is when you have three or four players, uh, three or four different factions, and the game doesn't just evolve into sort of like a scrum, because obviously with just two factions, they're just gonna run into each other and fight. When there's three or four different players in the table, there's gonna be a lot more maneuvering, more of the table's gonna get used, and fight's gonna break out all over the place. The, the fact that the deployment is so crazy too, when you just go back and forth deploying, uh, means you can sneak up behind people and do all kinds of crazy maneuvers. So that was a taste of the game. Um, if you're excited about it, you should check it out. Click the little I in the corner up here. That'll take you to Chris's crowdfund. Now this is a real labor of love for him. Um, he's been working on this for years and years, actually, as long as I've been a member of Core Hammer. Um, I've seen Sid the Krusty Punk and Chris's updates on this work. Um, he's just a huge fan of this genre stuff in general. And if you're a fan of it, if you're a fan of either punk and sort of like genre subculture stuff, um, if you're a fan of uh, indie games, if you're a fan of crazy movies like uh, Hope with a Shotgun or The Warriors and all that sort of super fun uh, gang stuff, then this is probably the game for you. It would be a super fun party game. Um, it's light, relaxed, and really, really funny. And I think that that's probably its greatest charm, um, is that you can get three or four people around just chucking dice, yelling at each other, and getting wild in the streets. So I hope you do check it out. Now, like I said before, I have three copies of this to give away. I'm going to give away one on YouTube. So if you want a copy, all you have to do is up on the video. Um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and then comment in the comments saying let's get wild in the streets and I will randomly select uh, one YouTube viewer to get a free copy. I will message you through the YouTube messaging system so make sure you check it to get back to me in seven days. So um, I'll give it seven days so as many people as possible can check out the video. Um, and the same thing goes for Patreon. I will have two copies to give to you guys um, but with Patreon different guys in Patreon like different things. If you're interested in getting a free copy of this game and being entered in the draw, comment in the video on Patreon, give it a heart um, and say let's get wild in the streets or just comment saying you're interested in the comments uh, and I will randomly select again in seven days to give as many of the patrons as possible a chance to see the video and I'll mail you a copy I'll message you through the system and get your address and stuff so I hope you enjoyed that thanks to Chris for sending it to check us out it was gas I love how funny the cards are the upgrades are and having <laughs> having lived that life when I was younger in the 90s and early 2000s I can say that a lot of these genres and stereotypes and sort of like high school how you say classifications of people are not that far off I definitely knew Sid the Krusty Punk I definitely knew some goths death rockers um, and I probably met some murder cult girls that I didn't know were murder cult girls but I'll find out someday on A&E when they have a special about them so we'll see you for more Let's Play I hope you enjoyed that um, I love indie games I love checking them out we're going to bring you lots more in the future until then I'm Ash happy gaming.